That's so, pretty good. That's, that's going to do it. Oh, but. This group of guys are driven by family and driven by what it means to be part of a team and, and, and part of a family. So it makes sense for us to have that as an overriding theme. It's a culture that allows everyone a voice, uh, from the youngest member of the team to the oldest and most experienced of the team, and enabling everyone to hopefully be able to get the best performance and, and results that enables the team to be successful. We've worked really hard over the last four to five years in, in getting a good squad of blokes, both players and, and staff, working together to get to the common goal, which is um, being a championship team for Super Rugby. The HSBC Waratahs are more than just a rugby team. They're a community, a tradition, a culture and an icon of Australian sport. Over the next eight weeks, life within one of rugby's oldest and most famous teams will be revealed in a way previously unseen by the sporting public. Bear witness to the highs and lows the team must endure to become a championship contender. A team with high expectations of themselves and each other. Just let him call it. He's over there, he's got to call it. It's dead, it's dead, it's dead. The smallest bum would be Kirtley Beals. You know, we'll beat them on that second phase, you know, and, that, and that's how you did it last year, that's how you got all your pay last year. Oh! Great work. Oh! And you've got to love it too, you've got to love the ball. So let them go home. Yeah, right, what's wrong? Take time, take time. Get your feet a little bit further back on the setup. What's your name? I'm My name is Ben Ivey. The first 40 minutes against the Chiefs, I think, is uh, the way we, we, we're supposed to be playing. For the first time, cameras will gain access to the teams in a sanctum bringing the viewer closer to the heart of the HSBC Waratahs, revealing what makes them tick both on and off the field. How are they not diving all over the ball? We've been in the semis now two out of the last three years. We're a success story. I've been in the program for 18 months, so it's great to get out there and, uh, and to finally get to rip in. Oh, wait, wait, wait! <laughs> Welcome to The Code a documentary series that follows the team on the path to that elusive Super Rugby title, with the help of some loyal fans and traditional foes. As the sun sets on the Super 14 season, focus turns to the most anticipated year for professional rugby. The team is moving from off to pre-season, in a climate more akin to cricket than winter sports. Despite the summary cheer, the intent is methodical and structured. Initially, I guess, trying to put some skill development work in. So, for, you know, with the back line, it's, it's just some, some basic handling and catch pass, identifying and understanding our running lines, you know, and angles and, and, all, and all that before we actually start to pull it together as an actual team. Every session, just aim for that quality. A lot of it, I think, for you guys just comes with communication. You know, good early talk. Come closer to me here, Tommy. Talk to him, Jacob. And we had seven guys there working pretty hard and all up over in that session. They would have done in excess of probably 150 passes. Overall, it was pretty, uh, pretty good. And it's a nice day as well, finally. So um, all in all, a pretty good hit out. It's an important period for us because we need to make some gains, particularly in terms of our strength and conditioning. The players have been working on some really good programs that Peter McDonald's put in place there and we're seeing some really significant improvement in that area. During the season you don't get a great opportunity to really smash yourself in the gym and do the conditioning load that you need to really hit the season running. It's all about um, you know, getting fitter, getting stronger and uh, just gelling with all the, the, the new guys in the squad. The main focus 
for pre-season is to get uh, our fitness and, and our uh, strength based up. Pre-season is the grind that reboots the bodies of both rested players and some weary wallabies. Over two months, these individuals converge to perfect skills and fine-tune fitness to the highest level. In keeping with their reputation for innovation, the coaching staff have employed the services of several experts in specialist fields. Go! Uh, wrestling can help in uh, many ways. It, it can help with better posture, uh, more aggression, in, in the contact, in all aspects uh, of contact. All right, boys, going to, uh, one bloke's going to have the ball, the other bloke's going to get it off him. This innovation gives the players a chance to pit their skills with the best in the business. <laughs> all right, change over, change your partners. Still drilling, still stretching. Matt Sherbington knows plenty out. about the need for speed. But can he Go make jogging. giants Go. move faster? OK, so start small. I think there's two main oh, ways oh, we can get the guys running faster. One is creating a better technical grounding, working with their natural ability, though, not creating a, just a standard frame and shoving it over each one of them. All right, we're going to do fast feet again, keeping our arms going the same way. And then obviously conditioning them in that technical framework and hoping that they run as efficiently as possible. Slow it down, extend, extend. Awesome. Not all preparation takes place on the training pitch. The staff of Waratahs Rugby are building strength of a different kind, under the leadership of CEO Jason Allen. That real desire for high performance and the ultimate goal is always on the plate every day. Uh, mate, yeah, we started pre-season last week, so uh, we're up and running. You know, we're virtually getting quick In the world of Super Rugby, winning means points on the shape. scoreboard. They're not gonna get it also means commercial success. The pressure of performing is not limited to the guys in the blue jerseys. To have that desire, that passion for success and the engagement to work as a team, whether your role is on the field or it's off the field, is an everyday occurrence within our organisation. A reminder of the expectations of winning and the rewards of success were made by departing CEO Jim Lestrange in the final team meeting of the previous season. In regards to sponsorship, we're up a little bit from last year. The reason it's up is that we've got more games, we think we've got a better product. Uh, the lads, uh, yourselves, uh, we got uh, in the semis last year. Um, we've been in the semis now two out of the last three years. We're a success story. We're the best team in the comp in Australia. We think that's worth a little bit of money. For now, the only priority for the players is that the season is a week away. Today we'll just be taking him through just a simple goal kicking, all right? See how all your weight's falling backwards? Yes, yeah, so you need to be over the top of it, OK? The routine of training is often broken up by sponsor okay. events, and they provide a welcome opportunity for the players to show a side of themselves not often seen in public. <laughs> we'll come back later, mate. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. Try and hit the T or the R of the Gilbert and you'll be fine. And naturally, from a team of performers, Ooh, some unique characters right. emerge. Getting good power through it. You got, and you've got to love it too, you've got to love the ball. Tell it to go home, tell it to go home. Talk to it. <laughs> oh, you're not really feeling it, no? All right, we might have to try another way then. Um, well, there's not really any other way, are there? I don't think. One such character is Luke Burgess, or Burjo, student, wallaby oh, and part-time tour guide. Yeah, lovely touch, lovely touch, well, great work. Hello, this is the Waratahs training facility. We all actually live here. There are three levels, as you can see. The first is the players' training quarters. On the second level is the administration. And the third level is a rooftop area for barbecues. And there's one of the players. We have a receptionist. We also have life-size photos of the players. Massive. Now it's time to go down and have a look at the staff level. lots of desks and computers and the columns are adorned with photographs of uh, running rugby players. I think it's to scare people into doing their work. Again, photos of our ugliest players. 
This is Chris Webb's office. He's been the team manager for over 10 years. Let's see if he's got any promos for me. Any promos for me, Webby? No one wants to see you, mate. As you can see, this is the player's lounge. And don't worry about Beric. He's not sick, he's just really white. This is our theatre rep. It's a place where we have daily meetings and after matches here at the SFS, we have press conferences in this room. As you can see, Af has got his computer screen turned away from us. This is the Waratah locker room. You can see Phil was dressed in a suit. He looks even shorter. <laughs> and finally, here we have the gym. This is where guys sweat it out, trying to get faster, stronger, and better prepared for rugby. Split pull now. So, so split stance, pulling into your chest. Tom Tombleson is the assistant strength and conditioning coach, charged along with head of SNC Pete McDonald with the task of moulding a stronger, more powerful squad for the season. My role entails um, working underneath Pete McDonald and all the other SNCs and physical performance departments to prepare the the players as best as physically possible to play rugby. We provide. Uh, you know, strength and conditioning programs to improve uh, you know, players um, athletically, to be able to participate in, um, successfully in the Super 15 um, season. The players will lift weights up to four times per week before the season starts. In an environment gauged by measurable results, there are very few places to hide. I, I very much believe that when you go to the gym, you're going there to get strong and powerful and increase sort of um, Massive, if necessary, it's not the case with everyone. The number of months that we have pre-season are, um, are, are geared towards um, you know, getting those players uh, stronger, um, metabolically more fitter, faster, more agile, to um, to reach their sort of like uh, full potential to be able to successfully, um, you know, participate in this sort of tournament. And that's why you want to keep your shoulders over it. You don't need to go like that. Once you've, the most challenging part of my job is trying to pay, give as much attention to all of the players that we're prescribing to as I think they will deserve. Okay, we'll do hurdles now. Huh? Nice, Polly. Great work. That's just supposed to be your stronger side. It's a lot of knowledge there and um, sort of practical experience that, that they know how to sort of get the best out of what we're trying to achieve and the game we're trying to play. We've got guys like uh, Ben Mullen who's brought on 15, 20 kilos. Uh, big wife of Palu still is big size, but he's stronger than ever. They've got us uh, bigger uh, and faster and stronger. Over 120 years old, this rugby superpower has long been the pride of New South Wales. Its history hangs from every wall but one significant prize is absent from its trophy cabinet. Since 1996, the team has come close, but fallen short of winning the world's toughest provincial rugby competition. Pre-season has drawn to a close. The on and off field teams are poised for action. The tension is building. There's a lot of uh, excitement about this game. Um, you know, it's a huge honour for us to be a part of uh, you know, their first game in Melbourne. It's a big game for, for Melbourne as a city. It's a big game for Australian rugby. When the nine will go to the back of that scrum. While certain players finalise strategy, others are doing their best to test their teammates' focus. Go away! Rugby Club of the Year. A new era and a new team. The Melbourne Rebels ready to rumble as rugby moves south of the border.
The Tars line up for their piece of history. Chris Hickey and Drew Mitchell fill us in on why this will be their year. They were around the mark last year. Can they go a couple of steps better this year? Let's find out as we're joined here in Melbourne by Chris Hickey and Drew Mitchell. Gentlemen, welcome. I feel like, a, you know, it's very cosy here. <laughs> Thanks for coming. While talk turns the approaching game, much interest has been generated in Drew Mitchell's unique marketing initiative, a YouTube creation with a cheeky take on an all-black skills video. It turns out that the Waratahs have come up with a bit of an answer to that. They've been busy in the off-season as well. Have a look at this. Let's get tricky. Two... With one. 400,000 people took interest, but very few witnessed the effort it took to get it right. Oh, Blake, get out of the shot, mate. Let's hit this ball up. Oh, this is Time to cool it <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Booyah. <laughs> We're going down to Melbourne for the first game. I think it was uh, an amazing occasion. You had the newest team in Super Rugby and Australian Rugby playing the oldest team and uh, a lot of fanfare down there. They were waiting for this team for probably five years. Before the new tradition is established, an older and smaller institution awaits. Uh, g'day, this is Tatafa Plotenau from the Waratahs. We've just created a little MCG for us to uh, have a bit of a captain's game. The captain's game, I don't know if you call it a ritual, but it's certainly something that's played before all away games. It was a fiercely contested game of, I guess you call it, backyard cricket. Tom? Seriously? No ball. No Seriously. Ball. No Just ball. let him call it. He's over there. He's We've got the number one uh, umpire abuser, Curly Beal, who, uh, who takes his cricket very seriously and uh, manages to get, uh, in a very good-natured way, emotional and a little disrespectful about some of the decisions. He swung at it! He swung at it! At the end of the day, what they don't understand is that I make the decisions and the more they get in my face, the more, the more likely they are to get given out when maybe they shouldn't be. Overall, it was a pretty uh, exciting game, but uh, the quality of cricket was rather ordinary, I thought. Dave Dennis uh, got him home with a big six to, to win the match. Over the The Melbourne public have come out in full support of their Super Rugby team. Much like the visitors, no one is quite sure what to expect from the Rebels. Getting to know your enemy can't afford to take 80 minutes. Seven for the Rebels, that's Michael Lippmann. Well, Plotter now very aggressive getting in there tight. Hilgen Dorf. Pushing <laughs> sharp here, plenty of feeling out there. Get part of the action. That's a yellow card. You can go. For team manager Chris Webb, an early scuffle sparks his evening into life. You all right? You got the clock? Gee, don't see that too often, do you, Chuck? Down. They need a good bounce. And who's going to win the race? Barnes. Anything for Mummy while we're here? After 24 minutes of awkward but necessary exchanges, the tide begins to turn in favour of the visitors. Taken by accordingly. Do that was great work. Rocky Turner, I think it was. Hell Baxter passing and getting it away to Mo on his Phil War. And War up over the 22. Plenty of numbers out to the left, and Barnes wants to go wide. They put it through the hands. Waratahs through the hands. Try. First try. Try. 
No try. And how, how did he not see that? The touch is right there. Lead by five, and Barnes is going to kick for the corner. Drew Mitchell needs a bounce, gets it. Drew Mitchell, brilliant. A great take, Kane Douglas. And now the drive comes from the Waratahs. They're getting very close to the line. Pilotta now, he's over the line. Did he get it down? Try. Early points in the second half to the New South Wales Waratahs. Owen gives it now to Burgess, allowed to run. Luke Burgess back on the inside. Try time again. He has got a double. And that is a bonus point for the Waratahs, their fourth try. And now Burgess, and they're getting closer. Bill Wall's got it. There he goes. Not be pretty, but it's five points. <laughs> Full time at Amy Park. And the first Aussie derby for 2011 goes the way of the favourites. boys are pretty relaxed going into it and uh, I think that was obviously put us in good stead to weather the storm early. When Melbourne came into the competition everyone was pretty excited and I guess a lot of unknown so pre-game there was a lot of anxiety and, and you didn't know what to expect. Uh, you know it's one thing to to have things come off in trial matches but um, you know, it's always a different kettle of fish going out into the, the first uh, season proper match. So I'd take a step back sometimes and have a look at uh, the situation that we were facing anyway I enjoyed the whole week you know, there was a lot of media build-up, which I actually enjoy, you know, it almost uh, makes you get extra ready for the game. Obviously the goal kicking, you know, a few misses early. I'd like to kick a few more and uh, it'd be nice if the boys could score them next to the post occasion. <laughs> we seem to score as far as we can near the touchline at the moment. Right, so we've got make sure to look after ourselves and each other. Uh, and then when we come on Monday, we're ready to work into the race next week. But uh, well done, really good effort. Everyone says that it's a cliche that you dream of playing for your state or your country, but I guess to represent my state 50 times, I think it would have been pretty hollow to have got that cap off Chris Hickey, our coach, and had lost. So um, one of those nights where everything went well. Just uh, on behalf of, I'd just like to uh, say it's such a privilege to play for you guys. Um, every week I love it. Um, in particular, thanks to the coaches with me and, and Warrior. I wouldn't be here today if they didn't believe me, and uh, let's make sure we win it this year because it'll be a good party. It was always pleasing to remember my 50th for that moment. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, just magic on the field and then to sing that song, something I'll remember forever. We're the mighty Waratahs, rough and tumble rugby stars. <laughs> Famous when we run the ball, we can scrum and rack and more. <laughs> Waratahs, Waratahs, playing the game as it should be played. <laughs> Next time on The Code, life with the HSBC Waratahs. The aim for 211 is, is to be the championship team. I think he actually played at three months, which means maybe we could go 10. I get up in the morning and I want to come here. I want to stay here as long as I can. Sometimes I've got to get pushed out the door. Oh, I've got a pretty significant whack on, uh, on the arm and it's hard to exactly know what, what, what it was. <laughs> The expectations I think we need to have is to perform well early. We've got a number of big games early on that we really need to, to dominate. Struggling Beal, plays on quickly, and now he gives it to Murray!